Hello everyone, thanks for giving me the opportunity and platform to share my experience. I am going to talk about generating Word documents with a repeating section from a Word template in Power Automate for desktop. Before I begin, I would like to give a quick introduction. My name is Mani Solanki and I am a tech enthusiast with, with vast experience in Power Platform technology stack. I specialize in designing and implementing solutions by leveraging the capabilities of Power Automate, Power Apps and other Power Platform tools. So during this session, I will start with the Word template and its application. Next, we'll discuss about the difference in traditional and modern approach for transforming data. Post that, I will tell you about the Word automation use case that I will cover in the demo. Then I will jump on the hands-on session. And lastly, I will com com conclude by providing summary of the entire session. So Word template is a reusable templates uh, that are shared across teams. It has a fixed layout structure with images or logos, repeating section for tabular data, consistency in formatting like fonts, line spacing, etc. Sharing template with the team members eliminates the need to recreate document from the scratch. These templates can also be used in automation scenarios for generating Word documents. On the right hand side, uh, you can see a sample Word template. This sample Word template contains a heading at the top and repeating section below it for showing invoice data in a table. I will cover the detailed steps to create a sample word template later in the demo. Uh, while generating word document in the desktop flow, I encounter a scenario to transfer data table to an, to an array or list of custom objects. The traditional approach is to declare a new list to store objects, iterate elements of data, to, data table variable using loop, Inside the loop, we create a new JSON object as a string, convert JSON string to custom object, and finally add each custom object in the list. The traditional approach is not an optimized approach for large rows in the data table variable. So to optimize the transformation, we will use for all power F function. This is the modern and optimized approach to perform the same data transformation. We can also reduce number of actions by replacing traditional approach with just a sim single line of power FX expression. Isn't it so cool? I will cover the detail of for all power F exception later in the demo. You can refer the list of supported power FX function in desktop flow from the official link mentioned at the bottom of this slide. So uh, using the desktop flow, we will first extract data from a legacy Windows invoice app. Second step is to create a Word template using Word, a Word document using Word template stored in the SharePoint document library. Lastly, we will share the document in an email as an attachment. Now I switch to the live demo. So this is the Word document. Uh, this is a new Word document. On the top, you can see a developer tab. If it is not visible, then you can go to settings, more options, customize ribbon, and you can see the developer option is enabled. So you have to enable that if you can't find that developer tab. Or if you no, can't find that in the right uh, list box, then you can select from the left and you can just add and uh, you know enable it. So this is required for cre creating a word template. So I will start with a caption. So I will use a single uh, line of text. Plain line of content. And if I click here, you can see the property. So let me give it is a caption. So it is a report caption. Next, we will add a repeating, uh, we will add a table. Table, we have six columns to fetch. So first column will be the ID, invoice ID. The next is the date of invoice. Then the account name, contact email. And next is amount. 
and finally we have status of each invoice item and similarly uh, we have to add you know a single line of text for each uh, cell values or uh, column value so what i will do i will add plain text content and we'll give this properties the title the id similarly we have this for date property set at date and so on for all the fields so this is we say account let's say contact properties title is amount and finally status so uh, while we uh, you know create a list of object we have to see like the object should have the same name with the property we have mentioned in each cell like id date account contact amount and the status so and now to add a repeat section we have to select this one and now we have to add a repeating section control so this is needed to add a multiple rows for this table so it's done if we see in design mode so we also give a name to this repeating section yeah. so this is a repeating control let's give this as table rows so now we have table rows as a repeating section and each and all the columns are embedded in this or are you know included in this repeating section like id date amount contact and status so let's save this flow let's call it as invoice template now i will upload this you know this template in a sharepoint demo site so go to sharepoint content or template upload file okay so next step is uh, i will show you the legacy application so this is a le legacy contour invoicing application we will extract the invoice data uh, from this tab this table and then we will put all this data in this uh, word template and create a word document so that is a use case now let me create a new flow so when we create a new flow we get an option to enable power fx for the desktop flow yes here you are so you should enable it because uh, you may not able to uh, you know toggle this option for an existing flow This is where we need like the Jeopardy music, right? Like, do do. <laughs> yes. Microsoft all by loading a desktop flow for a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Usually don't take so much time, but now it's taking time. It's like, I think that guy's doing a demo. Delay, delay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here you go. So you can see on the top, power effects is enabled for this flow okay so the first step is we will run this invoice application so we have run application action so here we have to uh, feed the full path of the app which i have already in my you know this notepad then we will open in a maximize mode and then we will wait for application to load and we will be 10 seconds to load 
Now just run it. Yeah. So it is able to open. Now we have we will add an action to click the invoice tab. So we will say click UI. Click UI element in a window is an action. So it will ask for the UI element. You can click add UI element. And then using the uh, you know you mouse pointer, you can select that text and press control and left mouse key. So it will add a selector to select the you know that invoice uh, button on the screen. So we will we will click left click. So let's click save. The next step is we will extract the data from that invoice tab. So we have extracted data from data from table action. Here also we have to add a UI element. So we first go to that invoice. And now we have to select this, you know, the whole data grid control and left mouse key. So it will add a selector for this uh, data grid, invoice data grid, and we will, you know, extract the data in a variable. So variable is data from table. And now we will terminate or close this application. So terminate, we will uh, we will close by ID process ID because the run application uh, you know returns the process ID. So we will terminate this. So our first step is done. We have uh, you know all the data in a um, all the data from legacy application is in a data table variable. Now we have to transform this data so that we can pass it to the word template. So word template basically understand the list of object or array of custom object, but here it is a data table. So as I, you know, shown you in the sl slide. So if we go by traditional uh, route, then obviously, obviously we have to declare list, then iterate the data table from this variable and then create a string and then convert string to JSON and then add to. So it is a, you know, the older approach. So we'll go with this modern power of X approach and it is an inbuilt, you know, uh, function that, and it's much optimized compared to that we are doing in a traditional way. So I will add set variable to transform the data. And let's take it as table row, table row list, name it as table. And the value, let's copy this one. So you can see the for all will iterate all the data rows in data table and then it create for each you know element it create a custom object and add it as a list add it in the list so this is the inbuilt function we should use instead of traditional approach and id date account and contact are basically the properties and these are basically the template field name which we have given in the uh, you know word template so and you can see the text. So we we are you know extracting only the text of this uh, data row uh, for each of the columns, and we have also used a concatenate PowerX function to append dollar for the amount value. So here, if you see the data table has a uh, column name that contains space. So for that, you have to enclose it in a uh, you know single quotes. So this is a syntax and now we will use word template. Action populate a word Microsoft word template from SharePoint. It will prompt for an uh, for for the connection reference. If you are already have, then it will reuse the previous one in the location. We will just locate the SharePoint site. So it was demo demo SharePoint. And now in the document library, we should uh, you know select the word template. And then we have the file that we have just created the word template file. So once it is selected, it will give us the template field to pass uh, the values. So in caption, we say demo or 
generated one and I'm using another power X function today. Yeah, then in table row, we just have to pass that, you know, the um, variable table rows variable that we have uh, transformed using power power FX uh, formula. So here and then we save it. So now our, we have the word document. Uh, created from the template and it returns as the base 64 value of the file which we will you know send it in the email for attachment so this is a create file item response is basically that object output object and next we you send an email it is also in a cloud function so this populative word template and send an email these are both cloud function that we are using in the uh, desktop flow i'm writing my email Now subject. Here is the and now to for attachment go to advance and you can see uh, the attachment property click edit and then click more the name we have to uh, you know. Uh, type the name of the file. EOCX along with the extension and in the content wide, we will just pass the output of, uh, you know, the word template action. Yes. So now fl our flow is ready. Uh, let me run it. So bot is will click the invoice tab. Yes, it will extract the, this data table in a variable. Yeah. So word is file is generated. It is successfully created. The word. So before moving to the email, I will show the email, uh, the final word document in an email attachment. So I want to you know show the transformation. So here you can see the data table. It has 25 rows with six columns, right? And within, and if we see the table row list, it has a list of custom object, right? 25 custom object with a single for all and you know power fx function. We achieve that, and each custom object has properties that are required to set the template fields. Yeah. So now I'm going back to the email. Yeah, so this is the word document. This is a email. And if I show you the you know review of this document, you can see we have a caption, and this is the you know power power effects today formula, and then we have a repeating 25 rows in a table. So going back to the slide. So we, you have seen how easily we can automate generating Word document directly in desktop flow by using PowerFX and cloud connectors like SharePoint and Outlook. We have also seen the real power of PowerFX function for data transformation scenarios. I hope you found this session useful and would like to thank everyone for patiently listening to me. Thank you. Thank you.